Pulitzer Prize winner Hedrick Smith, a former New York Times reporter, is on a mission with his latest book, Who Stole the American Dream? His book documents the systematic ideological attack on the foundations of middle-class prosperity that began in earnest in the 1970s. Smith is touring the country to focus attention on the roots of today's economic struggles and the radical political changes that we need to make the economy work for everyone once more. That tour brought him Wednesday to a roundtable of progressive political activists sponsored by the Campaign for America's Future, where I got a chance to ask him about the message of his book. Well, I'm trying to examine and who stole the American dream, how we moved from a country that had shared prosperity, where the middle class shared in the prosperity of the country, and we had workable bipartisan politics, to the present situation, where we have a gridlock in polarized politics, highly unequal economy, starkly unequal democracy. How did that happen? I think it happened because there was a change in the power in Washington. There was a huge power shift that started way back in the 1970s. And there was the rise of what I call wedge economics. In the old days, CEOs of companies like GM or GE or Standard Oil of New Jersey believed they should support the stakeholders of the company. That meant the owners, the workers, the managers, the suppliers, the creditors, the communities in which they operated, and their customers, not just the shareholders. And we've moved away from that. That's driven a wedge, wedge into the American economy. So the people at the middle, if you look at their earnings, hourly earnings and benefits, 2011 versus 1978 adjusted for inflation, dead even. It's gone nowhere. Middle class has lost out. At the top, it's up 600 percent. CEOs up 350 percent. How did that happen? It happened because there was a change in belief. It was a change in power. We had very different policies at work, and the middle class used to be engaged in politics, civil rights movement, women's movement, consumer movement, environmental movement, labor movement, all strong, all pushing on the economy, all pushing on Congress. And you got policies and strategies in America that built shared prosperity and supported the middle class. We've moved away from that. How do we get back to it? That's what my book is about. How does all of that affect or color the current debate that we're having about uh, how the federal government spends its money, whether we do more investment in the economy versus uh, the austerity agenda? Well, it, what it tells us, if you go back and look at the last 30 or 40 years of history, this is more of the same. This is exactly this, the kind of policy debate that's gotten us in trouble. Austerity politics, cutting the budget, cutting programs that support the middle class and the poor are not only bad for those people, they're bad for the American economy. What economists know is, that, and they've studied it and they've got lots of evidence, when you have fairly close income, uh, not equality, but the top and the middle and the bottom are not too far from each other, you get better growth for the whole economy. When you have high inequality, which is what we have now, you, you get slower growth. And the sequester and the budget cutting is going to contribute to higher inequality. And so it's the wrong agenda. We're not even talking about the right thing. Instead of being talking about budget deficits, we should be talking about human deficits. We got kids with a trillion dollars worth of student loan debts. They're going to be mortgaged for the rest of their lives. We're talking about burdening them because of the federal debt. No, they're burdened because the federal government isn't helping them have a lower student debt. Those are the kinds of issues we need to join on. The real issue is... There are powerful forces in America that have stolen the American dream, hence the title, Who Stole the American Dream? They are continuing to steal the American dream today. What we need to get to as a nation is back to building the American dream. That means building jobs. That means building growth. That means building exports. That means educating more people, uh, helping kids go, go to college, helping disabled elderly people so they can continue to work, uh, retraining workers that have been thrown out of jobs because of global competition. That's building America. That's what we we need to be doing instead of stealing the dream. And how do we, in this political environment, uh, how do we build the kind of, how do we create the kind of change that you're talking about? given where we are uh, in our politics? Well, I think you need to have movements uh, uh, that, that will push for things like raising the minimum wage or, or building the infrastructure that will make America more competitive again, rebuilding our highways, our ports, our airports. You have business leaders as well as labor leaders saying we need that. You have Republicans as well as Democrats. But beyond that, we need to get engaged as ordinary people uh, the same way they were in the middle, right, middle class movements of the 1960s and 70s, the labor movement, the women's movement, the consumer movement, the environmental 
political movement. Um, and I think we're also going to have to change the political system. We have a broken political system. And one of the basic ways we can do it, every single state, every single city, can change the gerrymandering of political districts, which is distorting the results of elections, uh, because they've got, and, and it's also creating the polarization in politics, because the two parties set things up so they have safe seats. Massachusetts, the Democrats do it. In Illinois, the Democrats do it. In Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and North Carolina, the Republicans do it. In Texas, the Republicans do it. In California, the Democrats do it. You've got outcomes from the elections that aren't fair. People know it. They don't trust the elections. They vote and they say, oh my God, we voted. They're not doing it what we wanted in Washington. Why not? Because you've got these polarized parties that can't talk to each other. We need to open the party primaries. We need to change the gerrymandering system. And then we can get to the policy debate that we need to get to on the issues. Well, Hedrick Smith, your book is Who Stole the American Dream. It's been it's created quite a stir, and I thank you very much for talking to us about great it. To be, great to be with you, and I, I wish you luck uh, with, your, with your important work at the Campaign for America's Future.